but you have to understand the principle, how the DNA sequencing works. Okay? How the sequence can be read by using this technology. So there are two parts. One is a principle, another one is a lab procedure. So the DNA sequencing technique that we're going to discuss, they have to know in detail is a signal sequencing. The signal is the name of the person who invented this technique. Okay? And to the former name actually is a dideocyte DNA sequencing. So it's developed by Federer Sanger in 1977, and he also won the Nobel Prize, okay? just like the one who invented the PCR. Okay. So when he first developed this, everything is still quite manual. Then the only, the first automated DNA sequencing available in 1986. So you're using the machine. Because of this, then the Human Genomes Project only possible after that. Then after, after that, now, we have the next generation sequencing because of the development of the nanotechnology. So the DNA molecule is about this size. This one, right? And this is a, I think this is even higher now and now. This is about a few years ago. The size of the technology. Okay. It's very close to the DNA molecule already. So that means that now you can make a hole small enough to put one molecule. In the past, it's impossible. So most of the next generation technology developed based on the nanotechnology. And it started in 2000. Okay. Then there are many different types of technology. So this is the name of the technology. For the single sequencing, you still need to do a PCR to make a lot of copy. You still need millions of copies of the same region, same sequence, so that the machine can detect. Okay? For the next generation sequencing, from here until here, you only need thousands of copies. Okay? So you still need to do some sort of the, not the PCR, but some process to to replicate a lot of the copies, but this time just 1,000 copies, okay? And for the latest one, this one, the pet bio, this one, they can sequence single molecule, okay? It just has like one single molecule, they can start the sequence already. You don't have to multiply the sequence, making a lot of the copies. So if you want to know more, you can follow this link, with the history of the next generation sequencing, different type of the technology. So for signal sequencing, there are two methods. First, they develop the change termination method. After that, they move to the dye term termination method. Okay? First, they use a change method, then the dye method. The principle is very similar. Okay? The way how they get enough uh, information for the sequence is similar. The only difference is how they read the output. So for the, for the beginning, I explained the change termination method. Basically, the basic principle for the DNA sequencing is a separation of DNA by size by using the electrophoresis. Okay? Then the second principle is PCR. So for PCR, just a, just a revision. So it's about the nature, annealing, <coughs> and extension. The only thing that modified here is at the extension stage. During the extension, it starts to extend. If you don't stop the extension, they will extend everything, the whole fragment, correct? Exactly the same length as your template, the original one. So what it, what it does is, in this technology, they stop the extension, okay? In such a way that you have different fragments. And then they can read the sequence based on this. So it's a chain allocation reaction. Same as a PCR, it's catalyzed by a DNA polymerase, the tag, DNA polymerase. They also need a four nucleotide, DNTP, DCTP, uh, DNTP, the N stands for ACTG, okay? 
That means that in the DNTP, there are D, DATP, DCTP, DGTP, DT. They modify something in the extension, right? The things that take part in the extension is the polymerase and DNTPs. Polymerase is the same polymerase they use. So somehow they modify the DNTP. Okay? So before that, we just check what is the original DNTP, how it looks like. Okay? So let's say this is a DATP. So this is just a diagram. Okay? This is this diagram is to summarize this one, eh? So this is detail. So this is the A, the A is here. Okay, then you have the sugar. Okay, this one, sugar. Then you have the phosphate group. Correct? So I just summarize everything in this way. So you have one, two, three phosphate group. One, two, three, okay? You have one base. In this case, it's the A. Okay. Then you have the ripest sugar. And I just made everything simple, except that I highlight this one. Okay? Okay, right? So this is a structure. So after this, I'm going to show you a lot of the diagram. Pay attention on this one. Eh? So this is the original DNTP. If you have this DNTP in your PCR, during the extension, they will keep extending until the end of the template. Okay? The oxide, this one. Okay? So when you zoom in, so just part of the, so just imagine now the extension is separate. Eh? So after the denature, after the aniline, now it's the extension. What's happened? Okay, this is your tablet, right? Okay, your tablet, your DNA extract, your PCR product. Okay. Then you have the first nucleotide. Okay, already started. So it's just continuous extension. Okay. So in this, in here you have the so here you already have the DNTP. So they mean the A, T, C, G. Okay, a lot of them. You also have the tag, and so other <coughs> other reagent. So this is the direction of the extension. <coughs> you have everything there. Right temperature and also the DNTP. So now. We imagine that DNDB is just floating around <coughs> in the solution. So just by chance, there's a one that match to the position. Okay? Then the polymerase will start to help the nucleotide to attach to the template. So once it's attached, okay, they have to make a new phosphor backbone. Okay? And then, during the time, they will release two phosphate group and also the one hydrogen. Okay? So that's the reason why you need a PCR buffer. You can imagine if this process continues, they produce so much hydrogen, then they will change the, the pH of the buffer. Okay? That's the pH of the reaction. That's why you need a buffer to buffer all these things. Okay? So this is what happened if the extension happened, okay? So for the so this is the original one. For the DNA sequencing during the extension, in addition to the DNTP, they also put the what we call the DDNTP. So just now is the deoxide nucleotide, right? Okay. Now is the D deoxide, okay? So this is a normal nucleotide, deoxide nucleotide, okay? And this is the DDATP. What is the difference? You see the difference, right? The O is missing, right? The hydrocell group is replaced by the hydrogen, okay? And you know that the O is very important for the phosphate to bond to the Previous nucleotide, right, to form the phosphate backbone. Okay? So that means that in your reaction, you have the normal nucleotide, DNTP, you also have the DDNTP, the modified one. Okay? So this is a key for the 
DNA sequences for you to generate a lot of the copy which different length. Okay. So yeah, TD and TP. So they will block the further chain allocation. Okay. Because they are lagging of the hydroxyl group. So far okay, right? 